Hi guys, it's Hinda. Welcome to Cooking Fantasies. In today's video, we're going to be making this delicious and beautiful dessert. It's vanilla and pears cake. It's actually something between an entremet and a cake because it has a thin layer of biscuits or cake and a thicker layer of cream with caramelized pears. It tastes so good. It's one of my favorites. Yes, it's easy to make. Make sure to watch till the end and I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know to make this beautiful and delicious cake. And if you're new to the channel, I always leave down in the description box all the ingredients you're going to need in both the grams and the cups measurements, as well as a link to the full recipe where you could also print it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified whenever new recipe is up. And let's get baking. First thing I want to start with is preparing the pears and for this I'm going to need about four small pears or three big ones, it doesn't have to be an exact amount. And I'm going to start by preparing actually the decoration and this is an optional step which means it's not very important for the recipe, it makes the cake look beautiful and nice but you can of course skip it but I thought I would share it with you, maybe you like the technique and you can use it to decorate different cakes or desserts and what I'm gonna do is cut a thin layer from the center of my pears the most important thing is that the stem should be attached to this piece I'm cutting out the thinner the pieces the better but if you end up cutting them too thick don't worry you can still thin them out and make them smaller and this is what you're looking for a nice uh, center of a pear that we're going to use for decoration as I said Next step, I'm going to use a non-stick pan on a medium heat to toast my uh, pear slices. And you wanna do this on a medium heat, make sure they don't burn and keep turning them around for about five, six minutes, as long as it takes until they start smelling nice. You will start smelling the aroma and they will start softening. After about six minutes, when they are nice, soft and toasted, I'm going to place them on a parchment paper or silicon mat, whatever you have, and place them in an oven that is preheated to 180 degrees Celsius. That's 356 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to bake them for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending how thick and or thin they are, until they are soft, nice and wrinkly. Meanwhile or afterwards, I'm going to prepare my pears for the cream layer. And for this, I'm going to core and peel my pears. I um, find the perfect uh, cubes or sizes for the pears is when you uh, quarter the pears. You have a half, you cut it into two, then you have a quarter. You, make, you cut it into two uh, slices lengthwise and then you cut it into smaller cubes. I find this to be the perfect size for the cream. So when you eat it, you have many little cubes of caramelized pears to have a nice experience of the whole cake. But this is optional. You can cut it however you want. This is how I recommend it. To caramelize my pears, I'm gonna be using vanilla extract. You can use fresh vanilla beans or even tonka beans if you have them. They taste amazing with the pear. To caramelize the pears, it's very easy. I'm gonna start by uh, cooking together the butter and the sugar in a saucepan until they melt and cook and have a nice caramel. Just make sure to keep stirring and the heat is not too high, otherwise it's going to burn. Then go ahead and add the pears. Because the temperature is going to drop, it could be that your caramel is going to harden again and you will have kind of a rock handy texture. Don't worry, just keep stirring, it's going to melt again. You can add the uh, vanilla also at this point. If you're also adding vanilla bean, go ahead add it at this point or tonka, whatever you're adding. Then I'm going to cover it to allow it to simmer and the caramel to melt again. And uh, once it's soft, I'm going to uncover it and cook it further for another two minutes for the moist to evaporate, then remove it from the heat. I'm going to transfer it to another um, dish so that it cools faster and allow it to totally cool before we move on to the next step. And now for the biscuits with nuts. I went for almonds, crushed almonds. I just processed them for two seconds. You can use any kind of nuts that you prefer. First thing I'm gonna do is beat together the egg yolks with the sugar. You can use a machine or a hand mixer, it's not important. It is always good if the eggs are in room temperature and while the egg yolks with the sugar are mixing, I'm going to prepare my meringue. For this, I'm gonna beat the egg whites with the sugar. I'm gonna start by beating the egg whites until they start getting foamy, then add the sugar gradually on two to three goes and keep mixing until you have a thick uh, meringue that's holding together work them until you have this nice creamy kind of 
custard base like texture you want it to have you want to have the sugar melted and not so grainy and at this point we're going to incorporate the meringue into the uh, egg yolks and sugar mixture gently by folding it in on many goes as many as you can go and by the time you have um, incorporated all the meringue your batter shouldn't be fluid it should be still holding shape then go ahead sift in the flour and again using a spatula gently fold it in until it's well incorporated at this point it's time to add the melted butter into the batter but if we add the butter directly into the mixture or the butter it's going to be hard to incorporate it without overworking the butter so a good technique to do this is add about one to two tablespoons of the butter into the melted and cooled butter and then you can roughly work it and mix it until it's until it's well incorporated then go ahead add this mixture to the rest of the butter and this way you can easily fold it in without overworking your butter and losing all the volume we have worked in and then finally we're going to add the nuts since it's a nuts biscuit you have the choice i went for almonds with the skin or with the peels you can use hazelnuts whatever nuts that you prefer but i think almonds go really nice with the pears so i processed my um, almonds for about three four seconds in my food processor I have prepared a uh, parchment paper with a circle that I have buttered the size. The circle should be 22 centimeters, about uh, 8 to 9 inches, 8.6 inches. I'm going to add my butter, make sure to even it out and bake it in an oven that's preheated to 180 degrees Celsius. That's 356 degrees Fahrenheit and it takes about 20 minutes to bake. Once out of the oven, allow it to cool before you unmold it. And now it's time to make the cream layer, the delicious rich cream. I have gelatin sheets. I'm going to be leaving down the, um, the exact amount if you have different size of sheets. This is the size of my sheets. I'm also going to be using a fresh vanilla bean. You can use vanilla extract as an alternative. Or again, you can use a tonka beans if you have that. Um, always when gelatin sheets are involved, you're going to start by soaking them into cold water for at least 10 minutes. For the amount of cream we are making, we need only half a vanilla bean. So I extracted the seeds using a knife. I'm going to be adding the seeds as well as the half of the vanilla bean to a saucepan to which I'm going to be adding the honey and the milk. I'm going to give it a quick whisk to make sure the honey is not sticking to the bottom so it doesn't burn. Then bring it on a medium to low heat and allow it to simmer and the vanilla to release its flavor. And then meanwhile or afterwards, I'm going to start making the base for the custard. And for this, we need the egg yolks to which we're going to add sugar. It's always uh, better if the eggs are in room temperature. And I'm going to whisk everything together, use a mixer or a whisk, whatever you prefer. And do this long enough, as long as it takes for the mixture to thicken and turns pale before adding in the cornstarch. And you want to sift the cornstarch to so make sure you don't have any crumbs and you end up with a smooth cream texture as you see in the video back to the milk once it simmers you start seeing the little bubbles on the sides of the milk it's time to add in the gelatin that has already soaked in cold water so you want to squeeze it from all the water add it to the milk and give it a quick whisk it's going to melt immediately because the milk is hot then it's time to add it to our custard base the egg yolks and sugar and cornstarch mixture you want to add your hot milk uh, gradually to the egg yolks mixture because you don't want the eggs to cook. You want to have a creamy texture and using a sieve will help you get rid of all the pieces that didn't melt from the gelatin, the milk pieces and also the vanilla beans. So go ahead, use a sieve. This is how you will uh, have the creamiest cream ever. Once you have incorporated all the warm milk into the cream, pour everything back into the saucepan and bring it again on a medium heat. The cream thickens quite fast, so you don't want to have your heat too high and you want to keep whisking in order not to burn from the bottom and you want to transfer it to a new bowl, a clean bowl. Never use the bowl where you mix the egg yolks with the sugar. This will always contain traces of raw eggs. So transfer it to a new clean bowl, then cover it in uh, with some plastic wrap to touch so it, do so it doesn't form this layer on the top like a crust, then allow it to cool totally before we move to the next step. 
To make the cream light and give it a nice uh, light texture, we're going to be incorporating whipped cream. For this, I need a uh, heavy cream, very cold right out of the fridge that we're going to mix until we have a nice light uh, whipped cream texture. And then we're going to gently incorporate it into our uh, custard or creme pâtissière after it has totally cooled. And because it contains gelatin, as you see, it's quite thick. You can use a uh, electric mixer or a spatula, whatever helps you incorporate the whipped cream you just want to do this gently and slowly in order to keep all the air and finally go ahead and add the caramelized pears after they have cooled and also incorporate them into the cream my pear custard cream is ready time to start assembling the cake first i'm going to release my cake from the baking tin peel off the parchment paper and what i'm also going to do is use a bread knife to gently and slowly remove the very thin uh, crust or upper layer of my cake only this brown one um, you can of course leave it out this is for aesthetic reasons i just don't want to have this really thin brown line between the cake and the cream when i cut into my dessert so so this is how it looks like this biscuit is so soft and delicious you need to assemble the cake directly on a cake board or on the dish you will be serving it in you need a circular mold about 22 centimeters in diameter that's between 8 and 9 inches i used acetate foil this is optional you can use it or leave it out and then i'm going to be adding first thing my cake to the bottom or the biscuit then go ahead and add the vanilla cream with the pears. Make sure to spread it evenly and smoothen it out. You want to do this right after mixing the cream and folding in the pears. You don't want to wait too long because of the gelatin. It's going to set and hold the shape again. So as soon as you mix everything together, go ahead and start assembling the cake. And as you see, the back of the spoon does the job just as good. Just make sure to even out that it goes to all the corners then go ahead and place it in the refrigerator for at least four hours to set before taking it out and unmolding it if you need to you can uh, run a butter knife or a spatula under hot water wipe it dry and run it around the sides and the corners to smoothen it out if you need to do that and finally, for the last touch, I'm going to decorate my cake with a thin layer of caramel or creme brulee, which is burnt brown sugar. I would highly recommend it if you can do that. It gives a nice uh, flavor to the cake. It looks beautiful and it gives it uh, another texture. So go ahead, do this if you can. As you see, my torch gave up on me. I didn't give up on it, neither on my cake. So go ahead, do what you can do. You can even uh, pipe some whipped cream, add fruits, whatever you prefer. Once I have uh, burned all my sugar, I'm going to decorate with the pears that we have prepared at the beginning of the video after brushing them with some honey to give them a little glaze. And this is the final result. I love this cake. It looks so fancy. The flavors are amazing. It's very light and rich at the same time. The biscuit is very delicious. The cream also, I highly recommend it. And I hope you will be trying out this recipe soon. If you do, please let me know how it turned out. I'm always happy to read your comments, your feedback. You can share your pictures with me on Instagram. I will be more than happy to see them. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you soon in a new video. Happy baking!